Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Before I get going, I wanted to ask uh, any of you out there, I've probably got a lot of weightlifters that listen to me. I've been waiting on for my son, I've been waiting until he was about 13 to begin some kind of baseball weight training program. But And I've always heard that for baseball, you're not trying to get big, you're, so you're, you're what you're doing is you're, you're lifting lighter weights but you're doing more reps but I don't know much about it and what a good weight program for a 13 year old he's just starting out how much weight I don't know what how much is too much how many reps what exercises to do is it bench press is it incline press I need someone out there who knows about baseball and knows about lifting weights to give me some advice here so if you know any, any of this stuff please let me know because I'm trying to put a program together this first thing I got is from Crypto Utility Guy at Utility Guy 7. Sent me this. And this is big right here, folks. Really big. If I can get it to come up. Okay. Here we go. We're coming. Every Friday, it seems like my computer decides that it wants to hiccup. But that's okay because we're going to get it to come up here shortly. Ah, not that one. This one. Okay, Bank of China to take part in blockchain real estate. The Bank of China will become the first bank in the world to use a blockchain network platform for real estate transactions. The groundbreaking development is a joint effort by property development firm New World Development and Hong, Hong Kong's Applied Science and Technology Research Institute. Paperwork is the past. Welcome to blockchain future. Um, the de details of this announcement include digital authorization that will eventually replace paper operations such as signing purchase agreements and mortgage applications. Hence, it will enable users to send the buyer's authorized, digitally signed, and encrypted agreement to any Chinese bank. Um, this is, says the implementation of blockchain technology for real estate is just beginning, and more banks will join the Bank of China in use using blockchain technology in their internal networks. I believe that the real estate closing process is going to be changed by blockchain more than almost any industry. I believe it's going to be massive. And if I was an attor aspiring attorney or a real estate agent or any of those type of things that are involved in that closing process, I would start to find out more about some of these companies like Propy that's, that are doing this. That's P-R-O-P-Y.com if you want to go check them out. But it's really, this is going to get very, very interesting. And I think that might be an advertisement there for property, but they were mentioned in that article. Um, let's move to this. Let me see. There we go. Let me see if I can get rid of this first. Come on. All right. Okay, this is from Charlie Bolelo. Um, He's showing the 2019 returns of Bitcoin at 39%. And he's showing some different um, different returns on different assets and asset classes here. And I, something I have not shown in a little while that I wanted to go ahead and show today. Um, for those of you that don't know, I was a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley back in the day. Um, and, and one of the things I've talked about a lot on this channel is that they taught us to diversify, diversify an investor's portfolio into different asset classes based on their risk tolerance. Usually their their age, the time of their life that they're heading towards retirement, you would weight things heavier towards income producing investments like bit like uh not Bitcoin, but like uh bonds that would pay people an interest interest on their money. And if they were younger, your the assets would be uh directed primarily at the more risky things that are gonna have that are growth oriented like S&P 5 or NASDAQ stocks, tech stocks, that type of thing. Well, what this is all about uh, all about now, and what you should understand if you haven't heard me talk about this before, is digital assets are going to be the new asset class. 
It's the first time a new asset class has come about since bonds were created in about 1696 by the Bank of England. Well, um, being a new asset class, that means that in a worst case scenario, every financial advisor in the world is going to be telling their clients that they need to have, say, a half a percent to 2% exposure in digital assets. But it's bigger than that because digital assets are, gonna, are going to swallow up all of these other asset class classes. For instance, gold will be tokenized. Bonds will be tokenized. And I'm going to show you an example of that here in a minute. Um, real estate, whereas now they've had REITs, real estate will now be able to be tokenized at the local level. Uh, a building could be tokenized. And all of these things will be trading pairs that are side by side with digital assets that were born of the technology itself, such as Bitcoin or XRP or Cardano, many of these things. Cardano, many of these other asset classes could be tokenized using the Cardano smart contract platform. But what I want you to understand is this, this is an asset, it isn't, they call it an asset class quilt, but we used to show these to our clients. And it illustrates that in each year, different asset classes do differently. So this year, Bitcoin is ahead of all of them at 39%. Um, next year, or, or last year, maybe Bitcoin uh, performed way down this list. But the point is, and the thing you need to understand is, the trillions of dollars in this world, the trillions of investment dollars in this world, are spread across all of these asset classes. And you are about to have inserted the digital asset asset class. In conjunction with that, digital assets are going to tokenize many of these. And then at some point, all these digital assets that have been tokenized are going to trade in pairs side by side with the existing, um, with the digital assets that were created as a result of the technology, such as XRP and such as Bitcoin and Cardano and Ethereum, all of those. But the point of all of that is, the liquidity that is in the market now to the tune of 175, 180 billion dollars is not, that's, that's a, a pimple on a rat's butt compared to the amount of liquidity that's going to be in the market and there's going to be liquidly being transferred through XRP and these other digital assets. The world is changing big time and your pocketbook, if you're a holder this early in the game, your pocketbook is going to change significantly due to that. Next, I want to show you this from Bitrue, at Bitrue Official, product update, stop loss order. You asked, we deliver. The stop loss order feature, trigger order tab has been brought live on PC now and will land on Android soon. Bitrue, I like to show Bitrue because these guys have gone out of their way to be friends to the XRP community and be responsive to things, the trading pairs and different things that the XRP community has asked for. So that's their latest thing. Next, the coin dad, two years and four months worth of hard work by Binance summed up in just one gift. Let's watch this. I want to show you this. This is amazing. Look what Binance has been able to accomplish in a very, very short period of time. Watch this. These are the exchange Bitcoin trading volume volume by exchange. Binance is not even showing on this list yet. Watch Binance appear. There it is. Binance has just come onto the scene. This is in two years, four months. Look what happens. That, my friends, is what happens when you put out a better product and you listen to your customers. That is what happens. And I think that speaks for itself. If you ever wanted a lesson in how to run a business, watch CZ Binance. This guy is on it. Okay, moving along. This is from Crypto BitLord. The reason I'm showing you this is that this is the second time this guy is not just some guy that showed up in the community. This guy has 91,000 followers. He's been around for a while. He put this up. This is the second time in the last two days that, some, that I have seen someone say that Bitcoin is going to hit 7,000 in, in the month of, by the month of May. This is the second time. And the first time it was from someone else, but it, but I, this didn't come out of nowhere. I believe a lot of these people who are into charting and really looking at this stuff, I believe that this is, they're seeing some kind of blinking indicators of what, how this is all moving. And one of them that I didn't just throw this number out here. 
one of the guys had predict one of the people had predicted what was going to happen in April, and now they're saying seven in in May for Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin does that, the rest of the market's going to do some good things too. Next, Brian Armstrong tweets this out. This is such a great headline. It's about this guy where the U.S. refused his visa. He wanted to work for Microsoft, and the U.S. kept refusing his visa. Now he's the Zoom CEO, and he's a billionaire. So sometimes it's not good to go work for somebody. Sometimes Some people can do it on their own. Many of you can do it on your own. Vitalik Buterin replied to, hit to this tweet, and he says, fun fact, I tried to be an intern at Ripple back in the day, mid-2013, but U.S. visa complications having to do with the fact that the company had only existed for nine months and the minimum was one year stopped me. <laughs> and then he goes on to become a billionaire. That's pretty darn interesting. Um, next from Bitcoin Exchange Guide, Boost VC's Adam Draper. This is Tim Draper's son. Cryptocurrencies will outnumber fiat, fiat currencies within the next decade. Adam Draper says here here will be more there will be more cryptocurrencies than fiat in the future. The cryptocurrency market continues to expand even when in 2018 the space entered a um, whatever recession whatever. Okay, next from Anthony Pompliano, totally agree with this. Wall Street is talking about Bitcoin again. Now that sentiment is shifting and they realize it won't go to zero. I don't think Wall Street ever stops talking about Bitcoin. I think that in 2018, they sent a lot of their publications like Forbes out to bash Bitcoin because they were trying to keep getting in on the cheap. But I do not believe that they ever stopped talking about Bitcoin. I believe the sentiment shift is all designed. And I think that, that when they're all ready, they get the media to say to toe the line and say what they want them to say. And I believe that that's what you're seeing now. Um, Next from Crypto Utility Guy, this guy's on fire at Utility Guy 7, um, sent me this. Local media, Afghanistani, Tunisian central banks consider issuing Bitcoin bonds. Afghanistan and Tunisia's central banks are looking to issue Bitcoin bond. Hong Kong-based news outlet Asia Times reports. Per the report, the governors of the two countries' central banks spoke at the annual spring meetings of the boards of governors of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund in Washington but between April 8th and 14th, Afghanistan's central bank governor Khalil Sadiq allegedly told the Asia Times that the institution is considering issuing a sovereign crypto bond to raise $5.8 billion. The funds would be used for private sector investment in mining, energy, and agriculture alongside Bitcoin. Sadiq reportedly mentioned metal futures, for instance, lithium, and pointed out that the country's mineral reserves are estimated to be worth over three trillion. You know what that means, folks? They want to tokenize their lithium so that they can get that money liquid. That's what's going to happen in this world, folks. Next, from Misty Sins at Sins Misty, XRP fans, I contacted CoinFlip ATM and asked them if they will be offering XRP. They said they are looking into it and might be offering it soon. Please like, share, and let CoinFlip ATM know. You would love to see XRP listed on their ATMs. And here's her exchange with CoinFlip uh, ATM. Hello, we're looking to integrate it and might be offered soon. Boom. All right, next. This is from uh, India. In, and it's uh, in India, poor India. They make me laugh every time because this is, these, this is a, a, a government and their central bank. They're kicking and screaming. They know that their control over the money is that they see their control dying right before their eyes and they're fighting it all they can, all they can. And they, they're going to lose the fight, but they're trying their best. I feel, almost feel sorry for these central bankers. India bashes Bitcoin and crypto as negative. Yeah, it's negative. It's, if you like printing money, it's very negative. If you enjoy printing money, and deval devaluing your your citizens' currency, yeah, it's very negative. Um, unfortunately, crypto is on the side of truth, and you're on the side of control and and holding your people down. Um, in the document, the RBI has compiled a list of products, services, technologies that it calls negative, and stresses the importance of protecting India's legacy options. 
credit registry, cr credit information, cryptocurrency, crypto asset services, trading, investing, settling in crypto assets, initial coin offerings, chain marketing services, any product service which have been banned by regulators. Those are bad. The entities may not be suitable for regulatory sandbox. If proposed, I want to go down to one of these. Here's a couple of tweets. New, uh, they're talking about how the intellectual capital over there in India is leaving the country. This is what happens when governments try to control the people. The, the talent, the, the brain power will leave your country if, if you do not represent freedom. Because human nature is that we want to be free. We want to be free to explore our ideas and to, and to let our brains fly <laughs> and to create and build and dream. And it, when governments try to harness that, just because a bunch of greedy central banking jerks want to try to control people um, and, and control the money, you will lose the people. And that's what's happening right, right there, right now. The general public is informed, uh, is informed not to make any type of investment in cryptocurrencies, virtual currencies such as Bitcoin, because there is a real heightened risk associated with them. An advisory issued by the Inspector General, general of Crime Branch uh, said, this can result in sudden and prolonged crash, exposing investors, especially retail consumers, who stand to lose their hardened, their hard, hardened, hard-earned money. Well. I know something else that can cause a crash, and that is excessive money printing. That can cause you to lose your hard-earned money really quickly. Uh, the IG said the public needed to be alert. I love how all these governments, they're so, they're so concerned about the public. They're just so concerned about the public. They, they really do worry about you and your, and your savings. Um, ask the United States how much we get paid on, on a, in a savings account these days. If you're lucky, you'll get one and a half percent. Now to me, that affects my hard earned savings. And the only reason the interest rates are so low is because of all this government intervention. If they were doing the right thing, they would have raised interest rates a long time ago, but they know they can't without the economy collapsing because they backed themselves into a corner with all this bailout garbage. Well, look at this. We're in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution where blockchain and crypto are playing a major role. India is completely missing out on this revolution due to the banking ban. A major brain drain is happening as we speak. Joel John, an analyst in UK, UK based outlier ventures tells the news out. We, we are having, we are having talented people and companies from blockchain space move out of India. There are enough countries out there who realize the importance and want to take a lead in the blockchain ecosystem. Companies moving forward is not a new trend, but the regulatory complexities faced by blockchain companies have accelerated it. They can easily fly down to Malta, Singapore, or Cayman Island, set up the company and start working on their product. You rather lead a technology wave than play catch up. As India shuns cryptocurrencies, other countries are working to integrate a clear regulatory framework to attract and entice developers and builders. Last week, Fran France issued guidelines to govern crypto activities, becoming the first major country to issue a comprehensive regulatory framework. Nice knowing you, India. You're, you're sealing your own death warrant right here. Keep doing it. Um, next, from the crypto man, at crypto underscore man. And remember, he does artwork and also has crypto socks. But you need to see this because I think this is one of his kids' soccer teams. Um, they are wearing XRP gear on the soccer field, and that is cool. So these guys are out there getting the word out in XRP, and it's probably a new thing and cool for these kids too. Look at this. This is them at the end of the game shaking hands. Now, just, just think about that for a minute. you got all of these, these people out here that are saying, XRP, X, what is XRP? That, my friends, is how you make adoption happen. So congrats to the crypto man. Go give him a follow and go buy some of his artwork and gear because he's staying at it and he's trying to help adoption. And that is what we need. Next, I wanted to show you this. Uh, since I'm all into baseball, this is for those of you out there that keep on failing at something and you're getting frustrated. Every strike brings me closer to the next home run, Babe Ruth one of the greatest baseball players of all time. 
I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. Every strike brings me closer to the next home run. Thanks for listening.